I'm a program manager in our labs organization in San Diego. I'm the moderator for today's session. Some housekeeping items. Please make sure to turn your devices and cell phones to off or vibrate so they don't interrupt the session. If you do need to take a call, please step out into the hallway to not disturb the session. And in the unlikely event of an emergency, head out the doors and follow the exit signs and get to the nearest exit. Today, we're talking about wrong paper. the Teradata and Teleflex architecture, and we have two presenters. We have Randy Eskridge, who is director, senior director and general manager of Teradata Platform Engineering. He has over 29 years of industry experience. He's responsible for the development of Teradata hardware platforms. Previously to his current role and since 2004, he was responsible for the server technology, product packaging, power systems, regulatory compliance, and engineering field support for Teradata hardware platforms. Randy began his career at Teradata in 1991 as a designer in the server management organization and was responsible for the embedded management processors of the 5100 through 5250 products. Randy has a BS in computer engineering from the University of California, San Diego. Our other presenter is Ahmad Baroudi. Ahmad holds the position of Director of Teradata Product Marketing and is responsible for Teradata software and hardware products, including the Teradata Database, the Teradata Platform Family, Teradata Query Grid, and Teradata Unity. Prior to this, Ahmad led the product management team responsible for the Teradata platforms, setting product strategy and direction. Please join me in welcoming Randy and Ahmad. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. So we're going to go ahead and get started. I'm going to kick things off and then turn it over to Randy and then come back and close it out at the end. We have a lot of material, so um, it, it's packed. We're going to get through as much as we can, and we're going to try to keep a little bit of uh, time at the end. We have the drawing here to have a little bit of fun, and we definitely want to hear your questions as well. So <clears throat> at Teradata, and you probably saw this uh, uh, at other presentations, we believe that analytics and data unleash the potential of great companies. And, and that sounds like a tagline, just some words on paper, but if you look around the room, um, the best companies, the who's who from around the world are, are here, right? And so this is a testament that great companies are doing great things with analytics. And to do that, you need a great analytic platform. You start out with the Teradata database, Right, which is, which is the top database for analytics and data warehouse analytics. And then you need a great platform to run it on. Uh, and that, that platform for the on-premises is the IntelliFlex platform. This is the number one platform for the best service level agreements, highest performance, con, um, highest concurrency and throughput. This is the platform that's going to give the best performance uh, for your environment. But you heard the announcements that we had and uh, Oliver talked about, we have Teradata everywhere in the borderless analytics, where we've taken the, the Teradata database, made it available up to 32 nodes on VMware. We have it, of course, in the Teradata managed cloud, both in Americas and in Europe. And then we brought it also up to 32 nodes on Amazon and Azure. And it's actually Randy's organization does that enabling under the covers for the data database, because in the end, all of these are platforms. So the idea here is, is choice, and we're going to focus on IntelliFlex. But the reason to start out with this, with this is that today, most of you, I'm sure, are on uh, an on-premises uh, system. And our uh, research over the last couple of years, and Oliver talked about this a little bit, our research over the last couple of years is that most companies in the next few years will have some type of hybrid environment. 80 to 90% will have some type of uh, hybrid environment of on-premises and off-premises. And to me, it kind of looks like a bell curve. If you take a bell curve and you look at the, the middle section and then there's the tails that go out. And if you go to one extreme on the tail, uh, that's where some companies, a, a small portion will be all on-premises, right? And, and the other end of the tail are the few companies that are going to be all in the cloud. But the majority, the 80 or 90 percent, are going to have some type of hybrid environment. And you only do that when there's a good business or technical reason to do that. You don't just do it because, you know, others are doing it. You want to do it for a good reason. And our view is that 
If you're running Teradata database and you're running your analytics, you have to have a minimum uh, uh, minimal service level agreement. And so what, what you're going to see here uh, be, between these environments is we're taking the best of both worlds, of, of, the, of the worlds, of the cloud and the on-premises. What you don't want to end up with and what we, what we don't want you to end up with is a lowest common denominator. So that if your environment really is mixed between these, you don't want to have the worst of both of, of all the worlds. You need to have the best of both worlds for consistent uh, per performance and consistent user experience. For example, when users think of the, the cloud, they think of rapid expansion, growth, rapid growth, kind of always available, that kind of thing. We're bringing some of those features that Randy's going to talk about to the IntelliFlux platform. At the same time, we're taking IntelliFlux platform and database features and moving those to the cloud, such as 100% data resilience. Right? When you're running your database out over here on the public cloud or on VMware, what is the data protection mechanism? You may know, you may not even know what's happening underneath. But in order to guarantee that you have a, a good experience and a consistent experience, we're making sure that the built-in data resilience that we have in Telflex is brought to these other platforms, right? So it is one cohesive environment for you. So again, it's not the lowest common denominator, but your experience has to be the, the best of all worlds. You saw Todd Sylvester show this yesterday at the uh, keynote presentation, and in case you missed it, or for those who are virtual and didn't get to see it, our vision is that the majority of customers will have their on-premises system here with IntelliX. And with this hybrid architecture, this hybrid environment, you may have your workloads running uh, over here, and here you see sales and inventory, finance and forecasting, and you get to the point where the system is kind of at capacity. It may not, it may not always be at capacity. Maybe it's the end of the month, right? And you do your processing. Say, well, well, there's this. I got to get some. I got to relieve this, some pressure. I got to take some workload off of this. Well, it just so happens that maybe you have the Teradata Managed Cloud and you have some uh, workloads running over here. In this case, we're running price optimization here. So you're running across the two environments. You can now, with a click of a button, that was just went really fast, moved one of the workloads from the IntelliFlex over to the Managed Cloud, reducing some of the workload here and increasing it over here. So you're load balancing. From a business perspective, you're making sure that your, your assets are 100% utilized. And from a technical perspective, you're making sure that you can meet the service level agreements. And if that's not enough, let's say you want another workload and you want to burst into the cloud and use Amazon uh, Web Services. So in um, Todd's uh, presentation yesterday, you saw how easy that, that was. All of this is available today. The user interface is concept and new, but the underlying capabilities are all there. And so that's why when we talk about IntelliFlex, we're going to talk about all the great features of IntelliFlex, but look at them in the big picture of, of all of, uh, of your environment and where it is going forward. So as we get into IntelliFlex, um, every about 10 years or so, we have a major architecture change in the, in the platforms. Started out with the DBC, right, the original database computer with, uh, with Teradata. And then some years later, we released the 3600 and then the 5100M, which was the first big SMP, uh, massively parallel, running on Unix, uh, and, and brought a lot of great features. And then about 10 years ago, we had the 50, 5400. We moved to 64-bit. We had a, a brand new nodes, brand new... Um, uh, cabinet, brand new, everything really in there. So major change. And now with, with the IntelliFlux, we're doing that again. New architecture, all the underlying principles of massively parallel processing. Everything you know and learned is all there. Nothing's gone away uh, here. But what we've done is we've made some changes to it to give it even more, uh, more flexibility as you go forward. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Randy to, um, to take us through IntelliFlux. Thanks, Maud. So, um, like Maud said, uh, every few years we go through a step function in our platform architecture, and IntelliFlex um, represents that step function today. Uh, and and uh, it, I, I'm really excited about this. This is one of the most interesting platforms that we've built throughout my career at Teradata. It's got more flexibility. It's got more capability. 
and the future capability that we, we are able to bring forward. And when I look at the technology that's coming down the road at us between now and, say, 2020 for the next uh, four to five years, IntelliFlex is uniquely positioned to make extremely good use of some of the new technology. Some of that will be disruptive. Some of that will bring new capabilities that are, that are unheard of. When we started out designing IntelliFlex, and, um, and we'll entertain questions later, I've got uh, a number of my engineering team here, and guys, raise your hands. Um, uh, the architect of the platform and so forth will be able to help address any of the questions you might have. But when we were first laying out IntelliFlex uh, and the platform, we had a number of underlying goals. And those goals were primarily driven by you all. They were driven by what we hear from our customers. As technology moves forward, we've seen over time server capability, storage capability get more, more, um, more in increase, more capable. And the effect that's had with our traditional architectures is the unit of increment in our systems gets larger over time, which makes it more difficult to grow the system in a measurable or uh, a manageable way from, um, uh, from what is acceptable from a procurement standpoint. So one of the underlying goals was to make IntelliFlex growable in a smaller unit of increment so you can buy what capability you need from this platform when you need it. So whether that's computer storage. Flexible system expansion, we built into the platform from the ground up the ability to expand the system without necessarily having to do a data reconfig. There's still the, the, the ability to add cliques into the system like we can any traditional architecture. That will require a data reconfig. Um, we've got uh, features coming in the database with multiple hash maps that will help, help uh, make some of that pain uh, a lot less. But IntelliFlex today will allow for unfolding of the system in a way that gives you growth of the system with no data reconfig whatsoever. Simplicity um, or s simplify the data center. I always tell my engineering teams, I want our products to be good citizens within your data center. And so again, we've built from the ground up flexibility within the platform to allow for re-racking capability, for uh, multiple conf uh, cabinet configurations so that we can fit in your data center in, in a, a seamless way. And then system availability, again, single system availability is a huge topic of concern for everybody. You need the best availability. We've built in features in the platform to get more single system availability out of the platform. And then additional products from Teradata like Unity and so forth allow for even greater levels of availability when you talk about running dual active systems. And, and with the entire uh, industry looking more at cloud technologies, we effectively want IntelliFlex to be essentially a cloud in the box over time. And that's where we're seeing industry trends. Industry trends are moving towards, for hardware platforms, it's software to find everything. Again, IntelliFlex brings the architecture to the table that allows us to think about software-defined configurations that meet your I.O. Your IO uh, requirements, meet your CPU requirements, and so forth. So let's talk about, let's go a little more in depth in some of the characteristics of the platform. The first thing, flexible multidimensional scalability. If we look at our traditional architecture, um, and this architecture served us well, we built some incredibly scalable platforms with this architecture. The architecture is based around what we call the clique. And a clique is a small collection of nodes. Today, that collection of nodes is limited to four nodes per clique. And the restriction for that is driven by the connection to the external storage. There's only so many ports to the disk arrays that we can connect servers to. And that availability domain, that clique domain, requires shared storage from the servers or shared connection from the servers to the storage. 
again, this lets us build a scalable system. We can build out a system of as many cliques as we want and grow it, but it's a pretty big unit of increment. You gotta, if you wanna grow, you gotta grow four nodes at a time along with the storage. So if all you need is compute, you're getting storage. If all you need is storage, you're getting compute, okay? What IntelliFlex does at its heart is use all those same components, but take storage off of the SAS interconnect, the serial attached SCSI interconnect, and put the storage on InfiniBand, okay? So now we have um, basically uh, uh, broken out the direct connection between the servers and, and put storage on InfiniBand. And this lets us now, because any, any uh, uh, system component that is on the fabric can get visibility to another system component on the fabric. There's some restrictions in there. We'll go through those in just a little bit. Um, but fundamentally, the fabric is, is just that. It's a fabric. And so if I want to add compute, I can add compute. And that new compute capability has access to the existing storage. Okay. If I want to add storage, I can add storage and just deepen the storage pool to the existing amps running on that system. And I've made that system, that this new capability in the system available to the system with no data reconfig. All it requires is a restart, All right? Furthermore, the architecture supports future enhancements because I can bring in um, additional storage I can bring in new generations of equipment, new, gener new servers, attach them to the fabric, and make them available within the system context. All right? The other aspect of architecture, and this is something that we have yet to build out, but we have plans to build it out, it gives us the ability to, for the first time to really start thinking about heterogeneous compute. Right? Traditional Teradata systems, all the compute elements in the system are configured in an identical way. We're looking at system designs in labs right now where we would consider compute elements that have different capabilities, perhaps GPGPU or uh, higher core count processors or, or whatever the, the requirements for the workload are. We're also looking at being able to support heterogeneous storage. I can't do this today primarily because I don't have the storage subsystem available to me that I can put on InfiniBand, but the plan is to make cold storage available on the fabric along with the rest of the system components. So I've got uh, flexible system architecture that can grow compute, I've got flexible architecture that can grow storage, and I've got an architecture now that lets me consider putting heterogeneous elements into the system, which breaks some of our traditional uh, uh, building block um, constraints that we had. <clears throat> so when you look at that flexibility in total, what that does for us, if we need to add more storage into the system, we add it in, we make it available, the system has use of it, again, with a single restart. If we want to increase, um, and, and if I add the storage in and keep compute the same, the compute still has to look at more storage, so you'll see a corresponding decrease in the query performance because you got more storage to go through. If you want to increase query performance, we can add compute into the fabric and make the query performance uh, uh, better. Or we can scale both elements at the same time. Okay. If I could just add to that, uh, sure. Randy. So this is probably the best feature of IntelliFlux because this means that you start out with your configuration one way and your business is going to change, right? It's not a question of if, it will. You may add to, decide to add more storage or more sensors or your query speed isn't enough. And so over time, the your business changes, the characteristics of your system are going to want to change too. This gives you the flexibility to change the characteristics, performance profile of your system to meet your business needs as you change over time. And so this is the, the greatest feature, I, I believe. Okay, who had five slides in the pool before Ahmad interrupted me? Anybody? 
All right, so let's look at another characteristics. 3x the memory. One of the nice characteristics of Teradata's database architecture is the shared nothing parallel nature of it. And the beauty of that for me as a hardware guy is um, I can actually scale out in servers a lot more efficiently than I can scale out within a single server. So as, as uh, Intel has done a phenomenal job at adding cores into the CPU. And, and we have seen generation over generation us make very good use of those cores. They can keep the cores fed with data. We can keep the server busy. But we're now at the point where Amdahl's limit is starting to, to hit us. We can put so many cores in a single server that we can't necessarily get all the efficiency out of those cores that we would like. And within a single server, you're pretty much limited to the address space that's available within that single server. All right? Within Teleflex, we intentionally selected a CPU that reduces the number of cores per server, but in total, on a cabinet-for-cabinet -cabinet basis, we've got more cores available to us. And because those cores are spread out um, across multiple servers, I get the address space of each of those servers to make available to the cores to the workload of the Teradata system. So I get an effective 3x increase in memory. That coupled with um, increase in DRAM technology means we're getting some incredibly good density of memory within the platform. So you can see we can go from, uh, on a single node basis, go from 512 gig to about one and a half terabytes of DRAM using Teradata Intelligent Memory to pin the hottest data in DRAM, a typical customer system can see as much as 50% of all I.O. going straight to DRAM. 87% extended downtime reduction. So we talked, we mentioned a little bit earlier, we built in data resiliency. Teradata platforms for years and years and years have had the ability to turn on additional data resiliency. You've heard it called fallback. With IntelliFlex and all the cloud products that have been announced and so forth going forward, all of our products going forward, fallback is on, um, uh, uh, is, is just an inherent part of the system. It's designed in from the ground up. And it's there to provide resiliency. Why do we need that? Well, when you look across our systems in the field, our platforms are designed to sustain any single failure. We do that extremely well. There's, there, I don't know of a component in the system that I can take out that will take the system down. What will, or what can, is if you have a double failure. And double failures are not common, but they will occur, and they can occur. And they can occur for a number of reasons. One, you can just get unlucky. That's really rare. Two, you can have a, a single hardware failure, and you can have human error. That's probably the more common case. When that occurs, and it occurs in a way that causes data corruption, you can see a system outage that is, is multiple hours. In fact, we, see, we'll, we have seen system outages in the 50, 60 hour range. It's really costly to your business. We don't want that to happen. The, the enhanced data resiliency within IntelliFlex means about 90% of the time, those errors will be turned from multi-hour outage to a couple of minutes, essentially a database restart. Okay. And so, um, so we, we think this is an extremely important feature. Again, it's built into the platform from the ground up. When you look at IntelliFlex on a cabinet for cabinet basis, comparing it to 6800, every dollar a gigabyte, every gigabyte you, you um, spend a dollar on, that's the storage you get. The system has built into it. The, the data resiliency. So you're buying the storage that you need for your system. The data resiliency is just an inherent element within the system. Improved performance continuity and a 75% reduction in hot standby hardware. So remember our four node clique in our 6000 series product, for every four nodes, one node out of those four nodes is reserved as a hot standby node. 25% of your compute resources that you buy in your system sit idle 
um, most of the time until you have a server failure and you need it. That's important for a performance continuity perspective, but it's a lot of hardware to have sitting idle. And so with, with IntelliFlex, we can now build a larger clique, and we can build up to, say, a 12-node clique. Actually, we can go to a 14-node clique, and that's what you see running in, um, in the expo hall. And out of those nodes, we can configure one or two hot standby. So in this example, uh, in my traditional system, I've got 12 nodes with four, four of the nodes hot standby. In this system, I've got 12 active nodes with only one hot standby node. Okay, 75% reduction hot standby hardware. And double the system size in 60 minutes. So with IntelliFlex, again, the large cliques, it's possible to either A, sell you a cabinet that is um, a smaller size clique, say six nodes, and expand that compute later, or sell you a cabinet with all 12 nodes in it and have some of the nodes running dark, not running at all, actually. And so they can be there, and again, all you have to do is take a system restart, redistribute the amps across those nodes, but there's no data redistribution, and you've just doubled your compute within the platform. Coming is the ability to do that through TVS, the ability to add storage into the system as well. Okay. Another feature built into the platform from the ground up was the ability to um, uh, essentially reconfigure the cabinet in, from a stack up perspective. How many here, how many here know whether their company has asked to re-rack their the equipment from Teradata? So for those who don't know, re-racking and, and the requests have doubled year over year for, for us. The request from our customers is to take our equipment out of our cabinet and put our equipment in the customer's cabinet. And why do people want to do that? Data center design has moved to a point where it's a holistic design from the cabinet on up. And so they, companies who have designed data centers like this get the best utilization, the best efficiency when they can use the environment that they've designed from the ground up. So we have, for, for three or four years now, we have allowed re-racking um, of the equipment, but it's a custom engineering engagement. We built into to IntelliFlex from the ground up the ability to allow for uh, uh, cabinet stack ups that weren't predefined. Cabinet stack ups that can make use of, if you have a 56U cabinet, we can now fill up that 56U rather than making you just use 42U of the 56U. If you have requirements, the platform would support putting compute all in one cabinet and storage in another. And the beauty of the fabric attached nature of it is it keep, cabling is simple. We, we have removed about 70% of the cables out of the system. So that actually represents another availability uh, uh, boost to the platform because there's, there's less hardware in IntelliFlex to fail. So uh, all these features um, and, and IntelliFlex is future ready. We're building in capability within the platform to extend it later. We're building in cloud capabilities into the platform to help enable that software defined provisioning that I talked about. And so uh, again, for me, an incredibly exciting architecture. The amount of uh, flexibility, the amount of possibility we have with this platform going forward. I've got some stuff in the labs that next partners, we're going to have fun talking about. And, and all of this is enabled by our first, our, our, you know, our, our tier one technology partners. So uh, Intel and Dell on the server side provide the best compute platform for us. And something that isn't entirely known, you know, or isn't in my mind well recognized is 
Teradata platforms are built with commodity components. There is nothing that is inherently special about the hardware I put in my platform, except for I've taken care to choose the right components, the components that have an extended lifetime, and more importantly, those components that can run at a 70% or greater duty cycle indefinitely. And when you look at commodity components in the industry, it's not always the case. They're not built to run at a high resource utilization, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And then our partners from NetApp, who are sitting here in the front row supporting me, or either making fun of me or supplying them, um, again, provided a first-class storage subsystem, gave us the first InfiniBand connected storage that we had available, and the performance that we get out of that storage, not only uh, across most workloads, is identical to what we would get from a serial attached SCSI interface. And when you get to the peak workloads, it's actually more efficient than serial attached SCSI. So this platform, I did a review this morning with um, one of our customers in a benchmark that we did. The unsolicited comment that I got on this platform, I'm going to go technical on you here. It's smoking fast. <laughs> I got to get a t-shirt like that. Um, so how, how do we enable that with the fabric? I think this is my last slide. How are we doing for time, Carol? OK, good. Um, so within uh, the fabric attached nature, I mentioned there were some constraints. We will hold a clique size to 12 nodes right now. And primarily, that's driven by the um, InfiniBand switch that we use, the Binet switch that we use uh, at our, our layer one. We, want, we need to maintain a good, tight control over the storage traffic. And so they've got a 36-port switch there, and that dictates how much equipment we can put in a single, a single clique. We need to keep that storage traffic in that first domain switch. That doesn't mean we can't scale systems like we have traditionally by adding cliques, though. Well, number one, I forgot my build. This lets us build the clique out and add additional capacity, and that's the capability we talked about earlier. But I can still add additional cliques into the system just like we always have. And when I do that, I go to a two-layer switch topology. And um, traditionally, what we see within Teradata, the storage traffic is about 10x that of the node-to-node -node traffic. And we're using two different protocols here. Between node-to-node -node communication is done with our traditional Binet communication, extremely efficient for node-to-node -node communication. Node-to-storage communication uses the ICER protocol. Again, extremely efficient protocol to enable that, that node-to-storage communication, which allows us to, to um, keep the nodes fed and build a system that can scale to smoking fast. Okay? And all that goes, so if you look at all of our platforms going forward, InfiniBand is at the core. Okay, fabric attached is at the core. So our Hadoop appliance, which is a rack of servers with integrated storage, it's fabric attached. IntelliFlex, fabric attached. Everything going forward will be fabric attached. Everything going forward from my platform organization is fabric attached and supports the UDA environment. And I think with that, I'm going to turn you back over to Ahmad. And um, if it's okay, ma'am, we'll take questions at the very end, and you'll be number one. Great, great. Thank, th thanks, Randy. And uh, I encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to go down to the Expo Hall, see the Intellifa cabinet, and visit uh, our partner booth with NetApp. They're giving away some really, really nice uh, gifts there. So definitely, definitely do that. So this question was put up here uh, for a reason, because the questions come up several times. Now that you're doing all these changes and everything, is IntelliFlex still shared nothing? Yes or no? Yes. 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 Yeah, that's right. Exactly. So um, we still have AMPs. The AMPs still own their data. There's no locking mechanism in there. There's no contention for, for data. It's still linearly scalable with the slope of one. So fully shared nothing architecture uh, in here. There are no steps backwards uh, on here. So. Because most of you are running your business 
on on the data warehouse. You need the you need the um, uh, availability. Every single one of our platforms has to conform to these standards. And this is these are the attributes that we build into our uh, platform: the high performance database, high performance components, uh, reliability, no single point of failure. Whether you're talking uh, fault tolerant features or high availability with failover, all built all built in, fully scalable, high concurrency, mixed workload going on down the line, right? And you'll have access uh, to these. We're selling them afterwards. So you have all these uh, slides later on. So uh, every single one of these will, um, every single one of our systems has the, the capabilities. And you can, you can look at all, all of the, uh, the different technologies, the binet, the scalability, the workload management, every single platform has these capabilities. And when you look at IntelliFlux, it kind of looks more like the 6800 than any of the others. It has, it has not only the, the checks, but the, the check pluses here. And with, uh, with the uh, performance scalability, we gave it two pluses, as Randy was describing with the additional I.O. We go from like three nodes to uh, two nodes, one node to, th to three nodes. So every single platform has the built-in capabilities uh, of this. So that brings us to the product line and what it looks like today. Um, we are not discontinuing the existing product line. All of this is available right now. We have the, the, uh, the small system here. We have the, the big data appliance that has the, the large storage in there, lowest dollar per terabyte. We have the uh, 2850. We have the 6800. And we also have IntelliFlux, which is the newest. So this is the total lineup that we have. But um, to, you know, to, to be fully honest, so everyone knows, our go-forward platform is IntelliFlux. That's where the technology is going. And to, to show that, to build on it, we just launched IntelliFlux four months ago, right? We launched it four months ago, and here we are four months later. We're already announcing new updates to this. As we move the engineering resources from supporting three or four platforms to supporting one, we have more engineering uh, time and, and, and energy behind this one platform. So we can bring out new technologies faster and certify them faster. So To be clear, uh, Ahmad, we've got all the energy we need in engineering. There you go. That's good. <laughs> so um, what you saw on the show floor, all SSD configuration, right? So, so consistent query response time, right? Fast performance uh, gives you the highest number of IOPS coming out of there. Uh, double the performance density, uh, up to 12 nodes in a cabinet, typical, typical configuration. Again, downstairs you're seeing 14. And double the memory from what we just announced, double the memory per node from what we just announced four, four months ago. Right, so we're using the, the, the higher density DIMMs. So, and with that, ter with that terabyte of data per, mem per node, Teradata database is taking uh, advantage of it with Teradata Intelligent Memory. All the in-memory optimizations and the vectorization, all that that we're adding in here takes full advantage of that. And so we're continuing to step on the gas and keep the, the uh, technology going forward. Um, so what's this mean to you? Everyone here has one of the current platforms, and we're not going to pull the rug out from under you. right? We're going to keep those platforms available to you to, uh, to grow, and you're going to have some options. We can't guarantee exactly how long those platforms will be available. There's technology, there's refreshes, there's end of, end of life components uh, come in. But if you're on one of these platforms, if you're ready for a technology refresh, we advise you to go to IntelliFlux, right? If you're ready for refresh, go to IntelliFlux. If you just bought a 6800 or 2000 or 1000, some general guidance, right? If you're looking to expand with the similar technology, Right, and you want to, you just want to grow. In the 2017 um, time frame, very likely that this still be available. Right, you can still grow with the same technology. Get out to 2019, very unlikely. Right, and and uh, somewhere in the middle here, it's a best efforts uh, basis. We will not continue any platforms unless we have to. We go through end of life components all the time. Right, you don't see that. Randy's group will. will will we'll, uh, change out uh, internal drives and memory and all these things to keep the platform going. We will keep it going on a best efforts basis, but this kind of gives you some um, general guidance. And again, if you're, um, if you're on these platforms, if um, 6800, you just got it, continue to grow with it. If you have the earlier platform, migrate. 
If you're on a 2850, it continues to expand with it until your uh, 2800, 20, 2850 continue to expand with it. If you're on a, a 27XX, we are evaluating an HDD only configuration. And if you're interested in that, because we're only considering, if you're interested in that, please come uh, and give us some feedback. We'd love to hear that. And then we're looking, of course, to add uh, cold storage to the uh, 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 1700, 1800. In terms of what's supported, Here's the first out of IntelliFlex. We have uh, database 1510. We have the first generation of, uh, of uh, storage with the hard drives, SSDs, and the nodes. As we go forward in time, you can think of this as kind of a window, right, of all the different platforms that we will support together in one configuration, one system, one image of the database. And, and then over time, that's a moving window. Thank you, Betsy. Nice. Now, it's, a, it's a moving window here of what's going to be supported. At some point, you know, some things are going to fall off. We're not going to be able to support them. Uh, but new generations will come in. So, so think about, the, about it this way, and we will keep you up to date with what that, uh, what that window looks like. If you're going to IntelliFlex, 1510 is the minimum, and Celeste 11 Service Pack 3. Um, this is partially related, but just a, a quick question here. We talked about hybrid cloud and this uh, idea. Just want to get your thoughts. Um, what's your belief on this whole idea of hybrid cloud? Uh, you're going to stay 100% on-premises, 100%, you're going 100% cloud, maybe hybrid in one to three years, or hybrid three years plus. Who's going to stay on, who's going to do A? Okay, yep, and there's, there's good, good reasons for that, yep. Who's going 100% cloud? Okay, Excellent. our cloud guy, our cloud person, yeah. <laughs> uh, who's, who's maybe thinking hybrid in the next one to three years? Okay, okay, and maybe three years plus? Very good, okay. Good. Which is very similar to what we talked about with the bell curve kind of er er earlier. Okay, very, very, very good, very good to know. Okay, let's have some fun. We have some... Well, Ahmad, before we get there, why don't we, let's... Entertain have a question. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, can, we have time for one question from the room. Oh, yeah. We also we have one virtual. question up here, Carol. No, and then we have some, a virtual okay. session, so. I'll try to be quick. Everybody has customers that want limited downtime to the point of no downtime. I'm hearing that uh, to expand whatever, that it's just going to take a database restart. But then I also see that we're going to have to do AMP migration. Is there a algorithm or something so we can do some type of predictive analysis to tell our customer that you're going to get a performance at while it's doing the AMP migration? Oh, the, so the, the, it's a restart. So when, when the AMPs migrate to the new nodes, that's, that's a restart. We'll, we'll have that configured in. So, so less than an hour. Okay. Probably 20 minutes, minutes really, at the at best case. Uh-huh. Good question. Is, is, is it, were there questions virtual? Yes. I'm getting the one question that we have time for. How does IntelliFlex handle Teradata DBS upgrades, node additions, config, reconfig, and DBS restarts? So, um, good question. So, um, and there's a lot there. Um, DBS restarts are, are the same as they are in any traditional Teradata system. Uh, reconfigs, again, today with 1510, the same as they are in any traditional system. When we get to 1610 and multiple hash naps, there will be uh, a lot more flexibility in managing how and when you reconfig, reconfig the data. What were the other elements of the question? Um, DBS upgrades, node additions. Um, so node additions up to the 12 nodes in a clique, you can put the nodes in, take a restart, and have that compute available to you. The, um, uh, uh, in terms of clique additions, that's going to be a data, today would be a data migration just, or reconfig just like it is in a traditional Teradata system. Okay. All right, so I guess, think it's time for our drawing. So we'll do a drawing, and then Randy and I will stay here afterwards for uh, one more. We'll, we'll stay over here for more questions, and then after we get kicked out, we'll go to the hallway and happy to have uh, more questions. So, so we're going to do a drawing here, and we're going to give away hard drives courtesy of our uh, storage partner, NetApp, here with our um, uh, IntelliFlex logo. 
And these are fabric attached. Yes. <laughs> yes. Must be present to win. So as more people leave, your chances are getting better. <laughs> That's right. Enough people win. If enough people leave, you and I may win. That's right. <laughs>